Welcome, welcome, everybody. Woo, it has been two weeks, but we are back. Welcome to Mornings with Movers again. This I'm Dwight with Max Moving Training. We got Clifford Starks, the motivational coach, who's, you know, still getting his workout in at like five in the morning, but, you know. What's up, amazing people? <laughs> and we got Marcus Hennings from the AI Movers community in the building. What's going on? How's it going, man? Good morning. Oh, another day. That's what it is. You know, and Thanksgiving week, if it didn't go by super fast, I, I know I ain't the only one bugging. <laughs> <laughs> right. But, but um, yeah, I like my parents came, my family came into town and I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to have a great week. And next thing you know, it's like they had not a town. And I'm like, what the hell? Like, <laughs> how the hell does we go by so fast? Yeah, for sure. And I was telling, I was telling um, somebody I, I encountered, and I was like, "Yeah, it just didn't make any sense." Like when we were younger, we were we couldn't wait till we were eighteen. You know, it was like, "Oh yeah, we get to do this, we get to do this," or mm -hmm. maybe we get to get our license or whatever the case is. And then when we turned twenty-one, oh snap, we're officially legal. We could do this, we could do this. And then somebody said, "Oh well, there's another milestone. When you hit twenty-five, your insurance drop. After that, you're just old." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's. It's it's amazing because I, I feel like every time the holidays come, I'm like surprised. I'm like, really? It's already <laughs> it's already <laughs> this time. It's already this time. Jeez. Like and you see it in the, the stores because they start like bringing out everything, you know, super early, like Christmas stuff comes in October and you know, mm -hmm. it's just like damn, we gotta think about Christmas already. <laughs> nope. Yeah, we try and sign new this year. Um we're not doing like the I guess Hallmark version of Christmas where okay. you know we were buying gifts for everyone and stuff like that we're doing more like a like a secret Santa type of thing where you just focus on yeah. one person um set limit and you know and don't have to worry about breaking the bank yeah that's I mean it's the way to do it just focus on family time and of course like Food. <laughs> yeah, <that's> good food. <laughs> yeah. So, um, what you guys do for Thanksgiving? You you cooked it up? Uh, well, I actually had my kids uh the week before and stuff. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I didn't do anything for Thanksgiving. Um, I just had went back in. I had a whole bunch of work to do, so I kind of just used that time to to focus and uh, get some stuff knocked out, but. Um, I spent about, I spent like 10 days with my kids um, prior to that. So we just kind of did it early. Nice, nice. What about yourself, Cliff? I got to drive in a blizzard and I'd be a little freaked out. <laughs> yeah. uh, Combination of just blizzards suck in general. And I live in Arizona. So, yeah. But we got out of it. We made it out alive. We could only see five feet in front of us and uh, got to celebrate with, with some family and just enjoy good times. What part of Arizona are you in, Cliff? I'm Phoenix, South Phoenix, Arizona. Okay, yeah. So I'm I'm mostly in Phoenix, but I live in Mexico now. So Okay, when you come out, let me know. I will, definitely. Awesome. Together. Nice, nice. Now, um, I was gonna take a picture and show you guys the other day that you know we had a snow our first snowstorm that actually stuck. You know, um uh -huh. I was driving driving back from Albany the other day and yeah, you get a cloud cloud storm of snow just hitting you on the highway, and you're like, oh, okay, this is normal. And then <laughs> you make it back into town, and your Mustang starts sliding. You're like, ooh, yeah, I remember they said Mustangs ain't good in this weather. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, I am not going out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so what's been going on in the industry? Like, you know, I know there's been, you know, still some people coming up to me, you know, saying that, you know, leads are still slow and stuff like that. Um, I guess what are what are some things you guys have been seeing? Uh man, it's it's definitely it's definitely slow over the board. Like um we have seen a, a pick up the last couple weeks. Um and leads and stuff but it's it's we're definitely in a different market right now mm -hmm. so what are some things you've been trying you know to change 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 it up a little bit working with the leads you currently got mm, you know i think i think the 
the the biggest changes that we've been making um is just getting ready for it by making sure we're running really lean um Mm -hmm. you know we try you know just going over all our numbers to make sure that um you know we're as lean as possible we don't have anything that we're not we're not utilizing and stuff um I'm, but just general, I'm in so many different areas for lead generation. It's just like, you know, <laughs> a little bit of everything. Yeah, makes sense. Um, I know. Are you still overseeing marketing, um, Cliff? I am. Yeah. So uh, I know a couple of moving companies. Same thing with what Marcus is saying. It's picking up a little bit. It's a different market. Uh, I do know Curtis is he's really leaned up. So he's just, he's cut a lot of expenses, especially I I know you guys, the insurance is constantly going up, constantly giving you like, Hey, here's, here's your next surprise. Mm -hmm. Um, so he's just, he's paying for the bare minimum of things that he needs to pay for, but he's got some solid systems in place, which is good. He, he kind of just focuses on putting certain things in place. Like, He's got uh, three sales reps and they just grind at the leads and they just, they yeah. don't have as many leads to to grind at, but, yeah. but they grind. And if you are a leaner, a leaner company, it's about getting on the phone with someone first and Louis Massaro style, knowing what they want, being very customer service appropriate, because when a lead comes in and this is what's hard for, for many movers, um, most of those groups that support movers is it's supporting all of the movers. So when one mover gets it, 20 other movers get it. <laughs> mm-hmm. It frustrates the movers. It frustrates the clients. And so you, you got to just be in your game. You got to have your systems in place. Yeah, definitely. Now I told my um, friend yesterday, it's like, I never believed in being a pressure, pressure seller. You know, um, I believe in full transparency giving them everything that I can give them. Um, you know, similar to what you were saying, Cliff, you know, Louis Mazzaro mm-hmm. was a, a big impact um, in my earlier years as I developed mm-hmm. my sales process. And it was just like one of those things, hey, full transparency. Hey, we're going to go over everything that we need to go over in the first few questions. Then I'm going to lay out how services work. And then from there, you know, hey, if we can um, get you on board, great. You know, if you have any rebuttals or objections, We'll, we'll address them, but ultimately it's their decision. We're not going to force their hand to go with us because if they already feel like, oh, well, ooh, your price sound kind of high. Well, yeah. if you force their hand, they could be a problematic customer because your price is already high. Maybe they can't even afford over four hours or five hours of service. And now yeah. you get there and they're not ready. And now their job is instantly going to go over four or five hours. And now they're really mad at you and they're trying to, you know, be a hostile customer, which it it could have been all avoided. Whereas, yeah. hey, you know what? I gave you all of that information. You've seen my reviews. That was one of the reasons why you got back to me or whatever the case was. And but you want to see what the market is like out there. So I'll give you a couple of days. I'll follow up with you. You know, you don't have to worry about calling me back because I know how customers are. Oh, yeah, call me back. <laughs> you know, I'll follow up with you. But, yeah. you know, I want you to see what that market looks like. I want you to see, okay, well, oh, well, these guys told me they could do three guys for two hours at this price. Well, lady, we was already transparent with you. It's going to, your job's going to be over two hours. You already know this. So you yeah. can go with the cheaper guys who just want to get in the door, but ultimately you're going to pay a lot more. Yep. Yep. So, you know, yeah. so. I don't know. I, I think other people see see it differently. Other people might want to come at it differently. Like, oh, we got to get that. We got to close ourselves right then and there. <laughs> well, I would say so. Like, yeah, definitely. Um, the sales processes and you like you have less less chances at bat. So you have to get that dialed in. And and I always think that um, the fastest person to the lead and the fastest company that can also provide the fast like the most accurate quote. So it's not like um, just getting to the lead though, but also getting the quote the quickest. Like, so instead of relying on doing an estimate and scheduling that in home, you know, five days later, you have five days of other people's opportunity, you know, so if you can do the virtual estimates, you can get those done right away. Like if you can get them right into, um, getting the information so you can get them the accurate quote, um, you're going to be best. 
And then if they are going to think about it, make it so when you send over the quote, you give them an easy button. So you have, they have everything ready there as soon as they find that they're having um, issues trying to you know get scheduled. They always know where to find you to just say, okay, book, right? It's like, it's not relying on them to have to call you or whatever. It's just like, I have a text message right in front of them where they can just click it and book it, you know, and then we're good. They don't have to like uh, all these roadblocks and stuff because people are lazy, you know? Yeah, so. you're, you're better than me because I want them to call because we yeah, got well, to take your deposit. <laughs> yeah, well, but we, if you can get a link to them where it's already connected to the deposit link, then you're, you're good to go. Yeah, yeah. The thing is, when I, I think with that system, and it could work, I just think with that system is if you don't have, like, if they don't physically get a hold of you and then they're just booking on your schedule and, you know, your sales team is not monitoring, you know, notifications mm -hmm. in your double, double booking, it becomes that little issue. yeah. Or if yeah. they or if the customer calls you on a day of the service and say, "Hey, I paid my deposit. Where are you guys?" And you're just like, "You did? You know, I don't see you in my CRM. <laughs> I don't see you anywhere." Well, it was yeah, giving well, me issues. <laughs> yeah, well, we're, we're, we're I'm the 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 system and processes guys, so we all know exactly when it happens. Like we have Slack connections and everything, nice. and everybody's aware. It's nice. super integrated. Definitely, definitely. Good stuff. Um, I was thinking about saying, sheesh, it always, you know, you think about the idea, if you don't say it right away, you definitely lose it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh -huh. But yeah, Phil, uh, not on Cliff, um, Phil, yeah, Phil couldn't be with us this week. Um, busy, busy man. But yeah, um, I know he's juggling. <laughs> yeah. Um, but that's the, the, the thing where you wear a lot of hats, you know, it's definitely oh, yeah. like letting up some of those things and alleviating some of those things and delegating. Um, I, I like what Marcus is talking about too. Like, even if it's not his specific way, where are the easy buttons? Like, that's the question because mm -hmm. you want to make their life as easy as possible. And even, even getting them to buy something because people do like to buy, they like mm -hmm. to buy and they're going to buy from somebody. So if mm -hmm. you say, Hey, so do you have any other questions? And if not, you ready to get started just a simple like here just sign here you, like there's being closed and and buying something mm -hmm. and making it as easy as possible and even going as far as like giving them a, a top 10 scams to look out for or what most movers don't tell you mm -hmm. yeah. giving them something of value that makes them go like oh wow such and such never no one else did this for me i hear that so um, I'm gonna share my screen real quick. Let's see. Uh, can I? All right. So I pretty much made it. Like I said, my process was super, super watered down. Um, it was one of those things where, um, you know, the the team didn't have to think that much. You know, when it came to services. So when we like, let's say hot. Hypothetically speaking, when a when a sales rep hop on hop on the phone with a customer, um, and they're getting information and stuff like that, you know. So we used to quote based off of the, the home size. So we use like bedrooms and stuff like that, um, and then any additional rooms, and basically it would give us a quote. But nowadays, just to go down to simpler form, where people are just using, um, let's just say weight based um, quote quoting. So we'll say a ten thousand ten thousand pound move just to be on the simple side. And the customer is not going that far, you know. They plug in basically four spots, mm -hmm. and when they plug in the four spots, only thing they get they go over here, and pretty much they have their quote. Simple as that. Okay. And this basically system basically quotes up to 10, 10 quotes. So if you if you need a ten man service all the way down to two man service, and it was only four spots that the sales rep had to put in, so. Basically, I didn't want my sales team spending so much time trying to figure out how to get the quote versus spending the time building a rapport with the customer. Absolutely. And, mm -hmm. Yep. And I felt like that was the way to go to, you know, simplify the process because, you know, the worst thing is you're fumbling on numbers, trying to figure out, oh, what's this number? Oh, she's talking. She's trying to say something maybe important or whatever it is. But, you know, I got to figure out this quote number before I get off the phone with her. <laughs> mm -hmm. 
you know, and they're, and they're fumbling. And I was just like, you know, and then they're like, oh, then they, after they go to the phone, they're like, yeah, I had to tell her I'll call her back with a quote. Whoa, whoa, why, why are we doing that? You know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'll tell you, I we for my moving companies, we do something a little bit different than I haven't seen. So we just quote half day moves and full day moves. Mm. And then we have the crew sizes and the amount of trucks, of course, as well. But we only do local moves. So what that means is there's a minimum and a maximum. Basically, if they're going to do a minimum, it's two hours with a maximum of, of five hours because that customer is going to only have five hours to get the job done. So we're able to quote the price and the range really, really fast. And then we utilize our virtual walkthrough to just determine to make sure that they're set up with the right crew size and the right truck size, um, and then communicate that. Um, we have the maximums because we don't allow our first customer to affect our second customer. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. So a lot of people want to always say, oh, I only need a half day. I only It's only going to take this long. Well, I hold them to it. I'm like, we're going to tell you something and we're going to, you know, we're going to give you our honest opinion. And if you don't believe us or agree with us, then we'll do the best that we can in that time frame. But I can't have you affect our second move. So it sounds to me that you guys are going to be extremely prepared and ready to go. So we should be able to maybe get it done in that half day. Right. So then it's OK. But we hold them accountable as well to uh, to what, what they say, because, uh, like I said, we will we'll never let our first customer affect our second customer. That's really important to us. Nice. When did you start nice. doing that, Marcus? Two years ago. What uh, hiccups did you come up with when you when you first started doing it? Abs honestly, absolutely none because I've, I've tried everything. I, I've literally tried everything. So now we're able to provide instant pricing. Um, <laughs> And with that instant pricing, it, it goes with the minimum range and it gives them a range of the total of two to five hours. It's a three hour range, like, you know, it's decent. And if something comes in in between, we just make the phone, like basically the first call, we can provide all the, the information on the move. Then we'll get a virtual estimate a little bit later. So we'll just give them a call and be like, hey, you know what? This job is like a rare occasion where we actually think it's going to be right in the middle. So we're going to make an exception and we're just, we're just going to make accountable for that. But for all the people that don't provide us the information um, the accurate picture of the house, the videos, all that, then we hold them to either option. Nice. Mm -hmm. no, that, makes yeah, a lot of sense. that could be easier on the, on the uh, customer too, because some complaints we get, we do an hourly, but mm -hmm. if they're expecting two hours or three hours, even when we say, yeah, it's a two hour minimum mm -hmm. They're in their mind. They're thinking, they oh, are. they'll get done in two hours. <laughs> yeah. So we've been able to really clearly fight, clearly state how we operate um, and the expectations. Um, we're able to do a lot of things because as soon as you send someone a smaller range, they hold you to it. And it's not like yeah. we can hold them to their expectations because they forgot about all the promises they made. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> <Real> <laughs> <quick recording. laughs> the virtual walkthroughs. Um, you know, like we do the we do the, the virtual walkthroughs, and then again on move day, our crews um do a video as well. So then um our sales team can look and see if there's any differences between what was said on the phone call and the virtual walkthrough compared to move day, um, stuff like that. So yeah, we, we hold them to it. And um, the few occasions that we do run over, we usually can add another, we can, we can go five and a half hours and not affect the next customer because the next customer has a time window anyways. Um, yep. so it, it's, it's like 99% good. I mean, we just do locals though. So like, you know, this is, this is definitely for your local moves. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. So. Yeah. I think we definitely, we, we got better at the video this year when we transitioned over to live switch. Mm -hmm. Um, and that was very, very helpful with dialing in. Um, you know, I wish I would have met Marcus a long time ago, you know, and you know, we could upload images to Chat GBT and uh, <laughs> it out be a lot, a lot quicker than having to look at this video. Oh, let me pause at zero five. What is that? 
Yeah. So <laughs> we we mostly do the videos. Um, and with the videos, we do talk to text. So when the salesperson is is watching the video, they just talk the language of the items, and then it just puts it in a spreadsheet. And then um, we do use AI to take all that and then throw it into um, a, like a very systematized uh, cube cube sheet. Nice, nice. Okay, what um, what software are you using? CRM. The CRM. Well, I have my own video processing like Live Switch that we use. It's called Move Genie. Um, so it, I I've been able to do that for I think since 2017. We've had that that capability and stuff. But what do we use for um, transferring the text to a cube sheet is I trained uh, OpenAI to do that. So you just talk into the our Slack message channel and then it converts it into a cube sheet and it gives us the, the amount of cubes and stuff. And based off of that, we know how many guys and how many trucks we need. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah, that's we all we talk, do. Because I think my, my spreadsheet and, and your mindset could probably work <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, you're especially like I, I'm all about that. Uh, I did some like in the early days, I had something very similar to that as well because it is a very good way. Because you know, I'll tell you, um, the salespeople that I hire, uh, ninety percent are not movers. Mm -hmm. So you know, there's occasionally a mover, and to train someone to look at things and know how long it's going to take, and it, there's a lot of things to it. So I very strategically simplify that process so I can just get a, a really good salesperson to do it and they don't have to have the the skill set of um how to really create the you know the time estimates and and, and that yeah gotcha gotcha no yeah no that makes sense you got to simplify the process you know I even thought to the point where somebody was like you know we would have like a sales rep you know they need to go out there and see it so they can understand, you know, the the somewhat the logistics. They don't have to participate in it, but they should be able to see it. And I yeah. thought about that when I created my trainings, where I was like, you know what, we got to give them some type of exposure. Don't have to be like, oh well, you need to pass this, you know, um, training with a hundred percent. But you do need to know, like, okay, what goes into a move? The guys are rapping. The guys are setting up home protection. The guys are, you know, they're um, using moving equipment and stuff like that. So some basic. So um, moving stuff. I tell you that as soon as we implemented the the movers doing their walkthrough on video and having the sales team be able to see that, and then when they finish loading the truck, they take a picture and that also goes in our in our Slack. Now the salespeople can go back and they can see all the stuff and how it looked, and then the, how big the truck was with based off of that stuff, and then they look at the job completion hours. I mean, they know really all that they need to know besides, you know, of course, the process and stuff, but they see a bit of that too, because we take photos for marketing um, during the move as well. Nice, nice. Now, do you um, have meetings with, with them where you go over like price variance? What's that? You have a meeting with your team where you go over price variance if the move was a little bit more than what they've been quoting or a little less than what they've been quoting. Yeah, absolutely. If that happens, um, which it really does not because of our structure, um, we would have a conversation. But I would say the outlying situations that that's happened, it's because the customer changed something mm -hmm. every As single always. time. <laughs> every single time. Yeah. If, once we go to the call recording, once we go to the virtual walkthrough, there's something different. Mm -hmm, as it always is and I think that was one of the biggest struggles I had where it's like the crew would just like like look at the inventory and just be like this is it's it's off you know mm -hmm. and it's just like oh we need to do a, a walkthrough or the customer house wasn't sanitary enough and you know and we had to unfortunately walk out a lot of moves because the house wasn't sanitary enough and that, yeah. that sucks because you know I never like to let a customer down but it's just like if you got rats and roaches running around your house, I'm sorry. Like, you know, these guys yeah. don't want to bring you home. <laughs> yep, exactly. But yeah, you just appreciate, like, you know, <laughs> have the house clean a little bit before we get there. <laughs> you, you would think so, you know. Guys shouldn't be having to climb over mountains of stuff on your floor because they can't get in the door. Yeah. And, you know, but it is what it is. But we can go 
I'm going to mention the other day, I was looking at the um the fun weather weather report on my phone and realized that Florida was 84 degrees. I was <laughs> mad as hell. <laughs> and then um, I got some people still out in Florida and they was like, yeah, I'm a little sick right now. <laughs> and I'm like, I could get sick in the heat. Like that, that was supposed to be when it kills the germs. Like I can yeah. understand the winter cold. <laughs> yeah, it's, anyway. it's pretty warm where I'm at too. I don't know the temperature because everything is in Celsius over here, but um, it's, it's super nice. What is the um, currency? Oh, uh, it's pesos or something. It's, with, it's right? Mexican pesos. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Yeah, I always think about how you know, um, like I've always dealt with you know USD. But I'm thinking, like, you know, if we got into another, like, country or so like that, how that would um convert or how we would have to convert that. So it's always yeah. been interesting. Yeah, it changes. Um, It changes a bit. Just fluctuates a little bit. You know, sometimes you have more or less with the conversion. But, uh, you know, it's 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 affordable, um, mm -hmm. beautiful. Just it's a great place. I, I love it here. Yeah. Now, I definitely got to visit there and actually visit. Like, you know, I think one of the things is as as um, tourists, when we go places, we try to stay on a resort, you know, or we might go on a yeah, tour. Nah. <laughs> and, you know, um, like my brother, he's very big on it where when he travels, like he'll go to California somewhere. And, you know, you get an Airbnb or hotel and then he's like, well, you know, I'm going to South L.A. or I'm going here and I'm going to. <laughs> and I'm like, going to where? Like. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like you gotta you gotta be able to live and explore and you know some of the things when i went to costa rica they was like oh yeah you don't want to go into these areas because they're you know kind of like mm -hmm. not the best of areas and it's just like well i don't want to be stuck in the in the fantasy area either where it's just like yeah. your just look good <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah right so I don't know. I, I definitely got to get out and explore a little bit more for sure. You know, it's just like I said, the resort be so good and the tourist area be so good. And you're just like, like Vegas. Oh, don't step off the strip. Stay on the strip. You know, and it's just like, OK, yeah. uh, you know, it's a lot on the strip to do. I'll stay busy for a week. <laughs> well, you're more than welcome to come out here and visit. I can pick you up in the States and drive you out here. So it's really easy and we can spend some time showing you around. It's 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 it's, it's a really nice place. Definitely, definitely. Um, I definitely want to get to um I gotta get to Canada too, even though I'm right there on the border. I've been to like um what is it? The Niagara Falls on the New York side, but I have yet to get to the Canada side. Okay. And you know, um gotta go see Drake too in, in Toronto. <laughs> 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 but yeah. um so Cliff, what's what's on the agenda? Like I'll see you blowing up with these um speak speakers. Yeah, things are coming together well. I'm uh, working with, so I went a little more generalized to uh, entrepreneurs instead mm -hmm. of just movers by themselves. What I love about the moving industry is Louis Massaro said it best. If you can make it in the moving industry, you can make it in Indian, any industry because you guys are juggling so many things. So it was a great, it was great to see, um, how many things you needed to look at mm -hmm. because it helps me look at all of those things. Like there's businesses. I'm not telling anyone to quit the moving industry, but there's <laughs> businesses where it's way easier to make money. And there's a lot less heading. <laughs> I'll tell you that. Um, yeah. Yeah. True. So I guess now, are you still coaching like direct clients and stuff like that? Like, what do you, I guess, I am. More. Yeah. I, I created something called the training room because I want people getting the reps in. And what's interesting, one thing that I noticed with the moving industry, it, it kind of crosses through every industry is we'll do things that we're not supposed to be doing. We're doing the 80%. That's going to give us 20% of our results. And we, sometimes we do it out of necessity and sometimes we do it because we're just used to doing it. We get used to the habit. And so what I do is I, I pull back the curtain, stretch a person's brain and let them see like where their leverage points are so that mm -hmm. they can really actually scale effectively instead of being doing the same thing five, six, seven, eight, nine years down the road. You can effectively scale a business in three years or less 
and and be good. Mm-hmm. But we're not we're not programmed that way. We're not programmed to say, "Oh, well, I could do it this fast." In fact, most people, and I'm I'm not talking about people who have entrepreneurial minded parents, but most people are conditioned to work sixty till they're sixty five. Mm-hmm. And so when you get into business, you're thinking, oh, well, what's 20 years? It's like, no, it doesn't have to be 20 years. You can do it in three. Mm-hmm. But we're yeah, conditioned to work hard. Yeah, work hard. Work as hard as you can. Just yeah. And so in business, you get into business and you create a job for yourself, not even knowing that you're doing that, instead of a system and putting people in the system. Makes sense. Yeah. I think one, go ahead, Mark. Systems and processes is key to getting out of the day to day. Um, it took me about five years in the moving company to get completely out of the day to day, and I, I can now, if I if I choose to, because um, I don't I don't work inside my moving companies anymore. Um, during the winter, I go and I I help uh, make some 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 changes and stuff. You know, if we have some things that we want to improve on, but. Um, if I didn't have systems and processes in place, you know, I'd be working in that um, business, you know, every day still. But now I can be in Mexico. I can be wherever I want and I can check in with my phone and if I need to and I can check the channels and the the data and stuff and see where we're at. Um, you know, like when we put in doing uh, surveys on every every job now, it's it's nice just to know that at the completion of every move that. I know if my customer is extremely happy or not, and then I'm not, um, you know, having to to worry about those things. It's just it's just done automatically because everybody knows what they're supposed to do, um, and then, you know, you have a lot of free time all of a sudden. Definitely, definitely. <laughs> well, I think one of the challenges that I face, you know, with the coaching side of things, is that people are battling themselves a lot. You know, like, oh, yeah, you know, things are really slow. I don't know what to do. You know, uh, what what do you recommend I do, whatever the case is? Well, I could, I could recommend a lot. But, mm-hmm. you know, are you going to take the action steps to put those into place versus, you know, challenging challenging one, me and yourself to say, no, that won't work. That won't work. You know, you know, and then basically be stuck in the same spot. And it's just like, no, you're, you're challenge. Right. You're absolutely right. Like in our marketing agency, I can jump on the phone with someone and I would say this is at least 90% of people talk to them one hour, give them life changing information. But are they going to do are they going to do anything? Are they going to, you know, absorb that and put it into place? That's the question. Because mm-hmm. uh, it doesn't matter what you give someone. Um, the best tip, the best lead source, the best whatever that could change their lives. If they don't do anything about it and they just keep going, um, it's not gonna not gonna change anything. Nope. And I think Cliff and said so, it best. Like, like a cra- crazy person, I ended up creating something called the training room. And it comes back, it stems back from my personal training career. So when we have habits in place, just telling people how to fix their habit, like it won't work they're going to go back to what they're used to doing. And so in the training room, we literally, we're actually doing the thing. We're not just talking about the thing. And that's, I'm like, wait a minute, everyone's playing an unfair game because they're playing the best game that they know. It's not Uh like, they're like, oh, well, let me go self-sabotage myself. Mm -hmm. It's, they know the game that they know. So they're, they're better off playing the game that they know than even attempting to play the game that they don't. So that's just like diets and exercises too, right? Like it's it's the base same same principle. It's like they might know all yep. the knowledge of how to do it and be able to tell everybody how to be healthy. But mm-hmm. if you're going in and doing it, and it sounds like what you're doing is you're you're working out with them. You're you're making sure that they get that the the reps in. Yeah, yeah. Because once they start doing it, like the brain starts realizing, oh, it wasn't so bad. Yeah, and then it starts, oh, that wasn't so bad. And then you free yourself from a job. <laughs> no, and that makes a lot of sense. It's definitely figuring out that way from a from a coach standpoint or from a um a person of that's giving advice to how to really implement, it. not just yep. like you said, talk about it and you know, say, Hey, when I talk to you next time, I hope that you got it in place. You know, it's like <laughs> let's, let's sit here, let's do this. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, because I, I just, it, it's the same as I'm like, okay, I get this. If I were doing push ups and squats in front of someone who didn't know what I was doing, and then I told them, okay, do these things like this, and I sent them home, either they're not going to do it or they're going to do it really, really poorly. Mm-hmm. Well, how would you apply that to businesses? Because obviously, in most cases, if you're trying to get somebody to make, you know, efficient processes or something like that, that may cost or may, you know, whatever the case is, how do you, how do you feel like you can incorporate something like that? Yeah. So for instance, like the sales piece, right? Mm -hmm. If you start looking through, okay, what happens when a lead comes in? Well, we do this. Okay. Um, percentages show to do this. So we're going to start like ripping and tearing at their systems a little bit. Mm -hmm. And they're not going to feel comfortable at first. Going to feel very uncomfortable for them and for the person doing it. Cause it's kind of like, I I remember when I was a personal trainer, people would give me these looks like not very happy looks, but they always appreciate me after three to six months, you know, when things start working in the way that they need to work. And that, that's what we're going to do. We're literally going to go in and we're going to have their people practice. You know, I, I want like if they have VAs, have their VAs practice on doing the new script, uh, busting up the new, but they're going to suck at it at first, just like anybody. Mm-hmm. But it's literally getting in and putting the reps in so it becomes their new norm. Gotcha, gotcha. Okay. So bite-sized pieces, you deep, deep dive and get get one step at a time figured and improved on and get that implemented. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. And the cool thing I I say, it's a a dance and a process just like anything else. So for instance, when I was asking you, Marcus, you you started um, the half day and full day moves and right away there were no hiccups, which is really cool. But usually when you're doing something new, there's going to be hiccups here and there. And you're just learning as you're going through the process um, life is a dance and sometimes you're going to get your toes stepped on and sometimes yeah. you're going to step on people's toes. And honestly, if it was the transition right into that and I hadn't made other uh, changes prior, um, it would have been an issue. Like if you're, if you, if you're not aware of the customers moving, you don't have virtual estimates done and you don't have the guys doing the videos for the walkthrough, then all those things come in play, right? Because your system's mm-hmm. not built yet for that change. You changed it. And that, yeah. How, and you didn't have the foundation set up yet. How long have you been in the moving industry for? 12 years. Okay. So there, there it is. Yeah. He got his hiccups out of the way early on. Yeah, Cause mm-hmm. if you, if you do a new, pro- if you're like, Oh, let's try this process. And I, I was like, no hiccups. And that's the next thing that I thought is, wait a minute. How long has he been in the game? Yeah. 12 that's, years. That's so he has a decade <laughs> of knowing yep. the ins and the outs. Yep. That's completely it. Yeah, no, that makes sense. It definitely makes sense. Tightening yeah. up the systems, um, you know, because earlier on for like the, Newer movers, like when I first got started and I was in the um, MCOU groups and, you know, they were like, oh, yeah, um, we need some of the big movers. Oh, yeah, we're implementing this and we're doing this and we're doing this. And you're like, oh, well, I ain't as big as them. You know, they got franchises. They got all this other stuff. So it's like you can't act on everything. So even though, you know, you've been in you got skin in the game, it's one of those things where you went through your trial and tribulations. You understood where you failed and you made strengths out of it and that's just mm-hmm. how it got to go you know you there are some learning curves where you can skip versus like oh yeah this guy i seen that he made this small mistake okay you know sure. i can avoid that but <laughs> yeah i always say you know, make make these small changes don't don't look at the overall sales process as a whole and make a big change look at the small changes and, and make those implementations and build off of that because if you do make big changes you might think that something is causing it and it could be something else because it's just too 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 broad of a picture so always dial in uh focus and then uh you know make tweaks let it let it go see what happens and then build off of that further gotcha now with with your half day and full day moves is that considered almost like a flat rate setup or is it is it still hourly no it's still hourly Okay, so all it is is except except um all it is is giving expectations on our crew and what what they have to do in a day. 
It's basically just telling them, hey, I can either dedicate a crew for you for the full day if it's going to take that, and then you're the only focus for us that day, as you might need and as you would understand how that could help. But if my guys need you know to work a full day and you don't have that amount of hours, well, I need to make sure that you're done within this time period so they can go and do a great job for the next people. Okay. So, so it's still if, it's a, if it's a five hour, you know, estimated job, you know, are you stopping at the round of five hours or how are you? Mm -hmm. And it might give them an extra half hour or something just because the way that our, our windows work. But because we got the video at the beginning of the move and the sales team and the dispatch team already know about it, we can make changes in the beginning of our day if we have another crew or another truck that we want to just swap around and stuff. So it doesn't always have to affect it. It's just setting the expectations to fall back on. So we can't, if we have no options to help them, um, then we've already set up the expectations, but now our systems have allowed us to see the information the first hour of the day, instead of like, you know, like, the guys call at 1230 and they're like, hey, it's going to be another four hours. And I'm like, why am I finding out this at 1230? We should have known this at 7 a.m., right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. You, and you got that dialed in because, oh, man, that is the stressful factor in the world where you're just like, it's 12 o'clock. Why didn't they, you know, um, why did they yeah. start the, the load up? They're supposed to be heading to the unload. We, and, we were, you know, they're we like, oh, all that. Yeah, they're I'm, they're like, yeah, we're still loading. We still got about a half a truck or whatever the case is. And I'm just like, what the heck do they got? Yeah. And the anxiety shoots way up. Oh, yeah, man. so our, our Slack channel, our CRMs tell us when they're done loading, when they're on their way, when they're unloading the videos. So, you know, if if you don't have that data, how can you be a, a, a good dispatch, right? Like if you're just relying on the guys to – um remember something <laughs> to tell mm -hmm. you it's not going to happen because man they get there and they get to that house that's a mess and it's chaos and they're not thinking about all these other things they're just thinking about dealing with their situation that they're in that day so if you put systems in place and you teach them that and it's always consistent uh they can't fail and that's really our job as business owners is don't blame your guys if there's something wrong there's something that you can improve on because it's a Man, put any owner back on the truck. They they know what it's like. Even when when I was an owner and I'm on the truck, I'm like, <laughs> I know all these things, but all I can deal with is this lady and her three flipping dogs. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Dude, I, I, Marcus, I love what you're saying so much because it's so true. Like when a person's in another person's shoes, mm -hmm. they kind of get like, oh, okay. Like when you only have so much bandwidth in your mind, and when it's spread and it's all over the place, yeah, you're going to, you're going to F up. And when yeah. we can put it's the systems and the process failed, mm -hmm. not the people failed. Do you want to be able to put like almost whoever you can put into that system and they can run the system? Yes. Yep. Because you have your crew leader that's been with you. Now he's teaching a brand new guy on that day too. Like there's so yep. many things working against him. So if he can't rely on the system that you built to help him do his job, um and perform yeah you're not in control of your business yeah yeah and i think that is the challenge is like i've i've always been a systems process person like i i always was a processes but it's a matter of even if you put people in that run that engine if they're not they don't have the right character or per or personality to be self-independent especially like a supervisor or manager dispatcher whoever has to be self-dependent on the system you know you can do all that work and it'll still fail you know yeah. so i think it do come down to the 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 character of that individual that you did put in that seat yeah definitely mm -hmm. have have very strong systems expect a hundred percent that they're they're done every time um make sure that they're important and they add value um and then like what i do is i add ai where i can now so we can just streamline it so instead of relying on someone to do a task now we set up triggers where we just basically do one task and a lot of things are completed, you know, after the fact that we used to have to do manually. And um, that's, that's how you, that's how you grow a business that you don't have to work in. Gotcha. 
Now, do you feel nope. like, and this was, I was um, trialing, doing a trial and error with this, but we even, we had incorporated Asana mm -hmm. to like essentially create like a checklist for certain tasks, certain dates, when certain tasks had to be due, um, if there needed to be stuff that needed to be uploaded to say, hey, you know what, this project is completed or whatever the case is, we would do stuff like that as well. Do you feel like that's some sort of um, micromanage versus a macromanage? Well, um, I I don't deal with Asana because um, I do in my, I do that type of stuff in my marketing agency, but for my moving companies, I stick strictly with like Slack and our CRM. And Slack is because it's a very good communication tool for all the teams to talk in between each other. And because you have all the ability to um, add integrations and zaps from different areas and stuff. So like, for example, um, if the movers run a credit card and it gets denied, in our Slack channel where everybody sees it, we can see that that card was denied and we can start working on, is there a payment issue, um, sales and dispatch, everybody, everybody's on board, we'll see that right away. So by doing that, like we automate a whole bunch of stuff, but then when somebody has to have a human involvement in it, we put it in our Slack channel and then everybody can see it and everybody's working on it and knows what to do if that happens. All right, hey, your crew's about to call you and say that there's card running issues. So maybe we have to do it in, in house or maybe, you know, we'll figure out that problem. Maybe there's a different payment method, um, but just things like that. So I don't need really um, like the Trello or the type of structure like that because I keep my, my processes very, very simple. Um, and because, let's say, how do I say this? Um, because there's like this, just this automated triggering and, and methods that are built out around it and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, it's It's not like someone has to go in there and, create create a task and then complete the task and stuff that's already getting done most of the time really like all my sales people have to do is answer the phones build rapport put in the systems the way that it's done and then they don't have to worry about marketing like remarketing and re talking to that customer really it's all done automatically um gotcha gotcha now do you feel like as like systematizing everything you know with ai and stuff like that do it leave your at times leave your staff with too much downtime? Not a concern. Not a concern of mine. Um, if if they have too much downtime, then I I repurpose their attention on something else. Um, I want them to have too much downtime mm -hmm. because honestly, I'll put it this way too: as long as they're answering the phones in the right amount of time and they're doing the sales and stuff. I would rather have the systems in place to have them have the downtime and the freedom to maybe work at home and, and get into other things and have that life. But we're still making money. We're still we're still crushing our KPIs. Like it doesn't it doesn't bother me. And if if the if they have that much freedom, then I'll have them you know write some blogs or something, right? <laughs> you know, like. You know, like, hey, what else are you good at? <laughs> like, you know. Nice, so, nice. Makes sense. That's absolutely now, are you, thinking right there. Now, is most of your team uh, remote sales team? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice. I think that was that was also a new, new challenge that I had to overcome as well, where it was like, you know, can you do remote type of work and feel comfortable that these people are getting their, their job done versus slacking off, as, you know, a lot of people do. <laughs> if you don't have the system built out and you don't have the way to track that, don't do it. You have to, you, you can do, start testing it slowly, but it's a big, big change on how, how things are done. Like there's um, you have to basically build management and systematizing and processes because you can't, it's not the old way of like, Hey, standing behind someone and saying, Hey, are you doing your job? You know, it's just like, you actually have to have the things in place. Yeah, definitely. I think, yeah, no, if you could definitely do that. And like I said, I, um, the sales podcast we had, um, um, 
probably several episodes ago, where they were talking about um, paying the sales staff full commission. I think that's key as well versus paying them hourly, because especially if they're working remote, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting the efficiency out of them versus, you know, oh, well, the phones are ringing. Why is the phones ringing? You know, let me call this person. Let me text this person versus, hey, they're actually working for what they need, they, they want, you know, and setting that expectation for them to, hey, you can go and get whatever you desire. If you desire a certain salary, a certain wage, this is the opportunity for you. But, you know, for us to, you know, pay you hourly to sit at home and not, you know, be answering the calls on a timely fashion just don't seem like the thing to do. Yeah. Um, when I hire someone for the sales position, um, I look at just their worth ethic in, in life and stuff. And, and and there's a lot of people out there that they'll just sit there and they'll work and they'll put in the time because that's just who they are. And if you have that kind of person, I don't care if they're the best salesperson or if they know the best rebuttals or not. That's who I want to partner up with is someone that I don't have to, um, you know, worry about what they're, what they're doing with their time. Um, it's just looking for hiring, not skill sets, but character. Uh, that's, that's a big thing for me. Um, making sure that the right characters in our, in the team, um, you know, everybody, even with moving, I'll, I'll tell you, you know, you hire these movers and they're like, man, he is the best mover. Like, you know, he's like got the most skills. He's super efficient or whatever, but like more morale and like knowing everything and like the, just the, all the other negative things. It's like that, even though he's the best, it doesn't make him worth it because he knows he's the best or whatever. And he's the pain in the butt. Yeah. Uh, same. <laughs> so um you know whenever i hear someone uh interviewing and it's like oh yeah i have all this this uh um knowledge and i've been doing it moving for so long and whatever hey pay me this much i'm like no i want to know like who you are right like that's the conversation we're having today because anybody can be a mover you know as long as you're fit and healthy and you can do it um but looking for the right characters for the team um you can train them and especially if you if you're super systemized in processes like I don't need anybody to, to know sales and I don't need to know any, they don't have to have any skills on how to, you know, estimate moves and stuff because my systems allow um, that to not, not be necessary. Okay. Well, we got a question. Um, Christian said, do any of you prefer a personal sales team versus a third party sales company such as Bees? I, I prefer uh, personal. I so, just think it's easier and you can uh, you can make changes faster. I've, I've heard pros on both, though. Okay. I can tell you, my personal experience. I, I agree with that, but I can tell you my personal experience is this. If you're just starting up and you don't have a great sales knowledge and a great sales process, there's really good third-party companies out there to take control of that part of your business while you build out the rest of your business. But I think with that in mind, you will go back into the sales side once you're ready. So if the sales is handled and they're doing a better job than you could do at this time, build out the rest of your business. Don't worry about that because maybe it's just you. Maybe you don't have a team. Maybe you haven't done all that. Figure out moving, figure out customer service, um, get that figured out. And then once you scale a little bit more, then get back to the, having your own sales team. If, if you can, um, there, there are sales teams out there, uh, without naming any names. Um, you might have a good experience and you might have a bad experience. Sometimes the bad experiences is just because the way that you're running your business isn't set up for them on the sales side to succeed. But at the same time, there is sales teams out there that are third party that their full-time focus is sales and they have leadership that know this side of the business really well. So if you're not ready to add the sales side and you're not answering your phones and all that's a, a miss and it's too much to take on, then I would look into those options for now. That, yeah. That's <clears throat> and, I, and I would say to that is, you have to be able to understand your numbers as well, because 
hiring an outside sales team can raise your your payroll percentages, even if it's not direct payroll where you're paying taxes on this employee, it's still raising up your contractor sales um, expense. So if you're paying somebody 13, 14 percent, you know, ev of everything that you're doing versus having a, a sales rep who's in the office who's getting paid maybe, um, you know, a base slash uh, commission, you might make out better and build your company culture with having an internal team than going with a team that, you know, may not have your company's best interest in heart, if that makes any sense, you know, yeah. because they're just trying to get a sale. And, and if, if you can't... Hey guys, I, I got to get going. Uh, Marcus, appreciate you having you on. Dwight, appreciate you as always. Definitely. I'll definitely. talk with you guys too. Take definitely. care, guys. Great day. What were you saying, Marcus? Yeah, I would say also in the sales process, like if you're the owner and you're doing the sales and maybe like, you know, you have someone, um, a wife or something that's doing it too. Um, you know, those, that, that works a lot of times, but if you don't have anybody to stay on the phones and you're not ready to hire like at least two people to co have coverage and stuff, um, then maybe having the outside sales. And now there's like hybrid versions where, um, they can help you for the hours that you need and stuff and turn them on and turn them off. But I will tell you this, even though you're having your sales outsource, if you go that route, make sure that you don't just give them the phone number and make that the phone number. Make sure you're going through call recording so you can listen back to the calls. Mm -hmm. Don't give them full control. Make sure that you have systems in place so that it's, everything is transparent and you understand what's going on in that side of the business. Um, we worked with them and we were some of the only ones and the first ones that were like actually monitoring the phone calls as well. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's a lot of insight that you get from that. Um, and there's a lot of ways that you can make sure that they're improving. And if they're just doing it on their own and you don't have any oversight, then, um, you're, you're in trouble. Yeah, definitely. And I think that is definitely big. I think you know, if you don't have a sales manager or you're playing the role of a sales manager where, you know, you you should know what the role of a sales manager is versus just saying, taking that title and saying, hey, I'm a sales manager, you know, because basically a sales manager is going to be different from an operations manager, which is going to be, oh, so you're wearing 8,000 hats in the, in the office, but you have to have your systems in place and your process in place, roles and responsibilities in place so that you know what role you're actually playing because a sales manager, you want to make sure that hey you're you're doing um you're 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 listening to the call recordings you're understanding what little intricate details you're you're expecting that your sales rep should be saying or said and how to fix it if they if, if they didn't close the sale on that time because they're looking to you for guidance they're like oh well you know all these customers are saying the quotes are high you know and that's why we're not getting a job so now you're quick to think you know what i need to lower my rates but do you like, you know, are you looking at yeah, that? Do you need to lower your rates or are you just in the sales process? You're not communicating well. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. that's the, the role where you need to understand like, hey, I need I need someone that actually knows what they're doing when it comes to this and that being very detailed about how to get to that next level, because it's, it's not as easy as most people may think. True. But. All right, so we are at the top of the hour. Woo. That, um, so we definitely, you know, hope that people got some insight and that we were able to drop a lot of value. Um, and we, again, we'll be here probably next Thursday. We're thinking about switching up the date. So I'll run a poll in a group and stuff like that and see if, you know, um, maybe another day will be better suitable for the show and stuff like that. But thank you so much, Marcus, for joining us. Um, if you want, again, you know, you're always welcome to come back. So, um, but for everybody else, go out there. You crush it. We will see you next Thursday. Uh, Marcus, definitely reach out. Uh, we'll definitely be talking. And anything before we take off? No, no that's it. Um, I appreciate your time. And it, I had a good time. So even though it's 6 a.m., um, I'm a little sleepy, but we're good. <laughs> All right. So everybody, you know, definitely look into the AI's mover community. Um, Marcus and Nick over there are crushing it. The group is growing exponentially. Yeah, um, we just had 800 members. 
All right. So, you know, definitely join, um, get the information you need to grow your moving company. This winner is going to be a winner. So, you know, definitely just look to look to increase your processes. All right, y'all. Yeah, take care.